I'd like to call to order the um, meeting of the Deerfield Planning Board on February 6, 2023, 6.30 p.m., hybrid fashion. And Denise, if you could read our introduction again. Okay. This meeting will be held in hybrid fashion with sorry. This meeting will be held in hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with chapter 107 of the acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL 30A 20 until March 31st, 2023. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with a particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance according for purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield, I'll host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details noted below. Thank you, Denise. Um, <clears throat> we will be having a little bit of um, uh, change up with some of our agenda this morning, or this morning, at the beginning of our meeting, as we're pleased to have Lisa Mead, our town council, attend and wanted her to to um, be present for a couple of the agenda items. Um, a reminder for during all of the meetings, certainly in particular during our public hearing that uh, we all want to speak one at a time, follow our Deerfield code of conduct to be respectful, considerate, courteous, and also <laughs> important tonight, uh, concise, non-repetitive, recognized by the chair. We do have, as uh, many of you have seen, a. Um, fairly full agenda, so the concise and non-repetitive is helpful. Um, we also, since we are having a um, two, several public hearings this evening, um, we wanted to, uh, during our public hearings, uh, reiterate the select board's um, <clears throat> anti-hate statement, which uh, has been adopted by the select board, but then now is being adopted by a number of different um, different committees. Um, and I think it certainly does pertain to the uh, to the planning board. So Denise, you could also read that. Read that too. Thanks. <laughs> the Deerfield Planning Board supports the Deerfield Select Board's anti-hate statement of November 11th, 2022. We in unequivocally condemn racism, discrimination, and hate in all of its forms. And we commit to working diligently to ensure that our town is welcoming and safe for everyone. As elected leaders, we recognize our responsibility to understand and address all racial inequality, racial inequality. We will encourage diversity of voices and representation on Deerfield towards boards and committees. We pledge to help foster a community where all individuals can live happy, happily, free of fear and with equal access to opportunities, regardless of race, religion, ethnic background, national origin, ability, gender, identity, or sexual orientation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, board members in attendance, Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, present. Uh, Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Wichroba. Kathy Wichroba here. Emily Gaylor. Emily Gaylor, present. Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson here. And Denise Mason. Present. Thank you. Um, our minutes, uh, I know Rachel did just send uh, okay. some today, but they've not yet been distributed, so... Definitely for our next meeting, where we will have uh, December, January, and then tonight's meeting. So thank you in advance, Rachel. Um, so to begin, uh, we will begin with the issue of the condominiums at Sugarloaf. Again, I will be recusing myself as an abutter and passing the chair responsibilities over to my vice chair, Denise. Okay, thanks, Emily. All right. Um... We received a response from Mr. Whiteman from Regus LLC in response to Mr. Peter's concerns. It appears that Regus LLC has satisfied all requirements and answered all questions. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Whiteman? No. Okay. Uh, planning board members, are you satisfied with the information provided? Yes. Yes. Do I hear a motion to approve a certificate of completion and authorize me to sign it on behalf of the planning board. 
I I'll think I'll move, move that. I was on the board at the time. So it seems very appropriate. I think I'm the only one that's on the board at that time. Okay. Second it. Okay. Second it, Kathy. Okay, so take a vote. All in favor? Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, yes. Kathy Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba, yes. Andrew Liebson. Andrew Liebson, yes. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord, yes. Annalie Wolfgold. You're I'm saying. recusing yourself. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. And Denise Mason, yes. All right, thank you. Yes, that's it. Uh, um, you put the letter together, and are we able to use that wording that the engineer suggested? Uh, to my the best of my knowledge, yes, and that would be a question for Lisa Mead. Lisa, are we able to use the wording that the engineer that Tony suggested? Um, I, yeah, I think that um, Madam Chair, uh, Madam Chair Pro Tem, um, I will uh, I'll draft something for your review. I understand what the request was, but um, we certainly have an appropriate certificate of completion um, for you to execute. Okay. Thank you. And also, I'd like to um, thank everyone's participation. This has uh, gone on a number of time in meetings, and um, I also am glad that we've had uh, good participation from the uh, community. We're always looking for resident yes. input, and thank you for your respectful comments. Anything would be on the phone line in the letter. Uh, I believe a lot of this has been posted already. Yes. The, the, if there are any, you know, any questions after, it's like you didn't. There, there are there are no questions right now because it's not a public hearing. But information will be posted online, and I'm sure you can talk to um, to Mr. Saint Peter. I'm sure they'll, they'll have all the information. But thank you. Thank you. Okay. So um, no, we'll move forward to our um, opening public hearing for our um, accessory apartment bylaws. And um, uh, I'm I'm sorry. Um, the the uh, legal notice it was posted for 7 p.m. This of course happened two weeks ago. It could not be changed. So I don't know that you can talk about anything before 7 p.m. Oh, that was before it was changed to six thirty. Yes, that that I had to post that two weeks ago, so that is uh, not changeable. Oh, hooey! So that's to business. Okay, then we will um, <laughs> return to that. Pardon? Since Lisa's here, can I talk about the accessory dwelling? Um, Amy, was the accessory dwelling posted for seven, or or could that be six thirty? Yes, it was posted for seven because that's when uh, we had planned for the meeting to start. As was Besh. Yes, everything is posted for seven. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes. This is uh, Town Council. I think that, um, as you know, I have to go to one another meeting, um, and so I can I just I think that I can give you a comment related to the accessory dwelling, and then you can have your public hearing incorporate what I'm going to tell you into your public hearing. Thank you. Does that work for please, you? Please, please. So as you know, you have the draft that we made comments on, and I believe that um, Kathy had adopted almost all of the changes. There was one item that I still had a um, question about that she also had a question about, and that had to do with in your definition section, you define principal dwelling. Huh. It built, right, a building uh, providing the principal use for the lot on which it is located residentially zoned lodge, such a building would be a dwelling. And that that conflicts kind of with the definition in the zoning bylaw generally of principal building use or structure where it allows more than one principal building or use on a lot. And so the way you've got it drafted, it, it sounds like that if there's an accessory dwelling, then there can only be one principal use. And so I just, there needs to be a resolution between the conflict between the principal dwelling as it is defined in the accessory apartment bylaw and the definition in 
the zoning bylaw generally. And would you suggest that wording become then in the definition section of our bylaw? Well, I, I would, you, you, if you, if that's what you want, that if the necessary apartment is on a lot in a dwelling and you're only allowed to have one principal use, then you need to say for the purposes of this section. But if what you're actually doing is just saying that um, if, if you're saying that it's the same thing in the general bylaw, then you don't need a definition at all, right? Because the definition in the general bylaw shall mean, it says, shall mean any building or structure containing a principal use, and then it refers to the use table, except for such use as a home occupation, where more than one principal use is conducted on a lot, and such uses are in more than one building or structure, each building or structure shall be considered a principal building or structure. <laughs> so I guess I'm, I'm not sure what the intent is of the board here, um, but if you don't, Kathy wants to say something, I can see her coming up there. So I, I, we just have to clean it up. Thank you. I, I think, that, you know, the intent is, you know, the principal dwelling being the homeowner's initial home, and then there's the accessory dwelling, right? So I am not quite sure how to clean it up. Maybe you and I can work on that. Yeah. So that, that <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a problem. I just think it needs to be straightened out. And I think that the idea is that if there's a house on a lot, that's a principal dwelling and that's okay. And in the principal dwelling, you can have an accessory apartment, okay. right? Um, and so I just want the board to be sure that let's say, let's say you have another principal use on the lot. Let's say you have a, a dwelling and you have a, I don't know, a feed store on the lot, right? And okay. that's also a principal use in a different building. Are you, do you want to prevent the principal dwelling from not having an accessory apartment in that instance where there's more than one use? No, I mean, the principal dwelling being the homeowner's home, right. could have an accessory dwelling, but the feed store could not. Correct, right? So a building providing the principal use. So, it, so in your definition, Maybe you say a building providing the principal residential use mm -hmm. for the lot on which it is located. Okay, that, that's how's easy. that? That sounds right. great. Yeah, okay. very good. Thank you. Otherwise, you all have adopted everything else I've recommended, and I have no further comments on the. <clears throat> Thank you. Bylaw. Thank you. Okay, so then we will return at seven o'clock for. Uh, the accessory apartment uh, public hearing and then uh, sunny days. So we will move forward then to some other pieces of our agenda. Um, uh, this one, uh, the an appointment for the library building committee. One of the things that the planning board has been uh, working with is uh, in the uh, town bylaws, it states that planning board needs to be apprised of and involved with uh, plans for municipal building changes. And um, at the last town meeting, we were all wondering how can we uh, opine on such changes if in fact we haven't really been given a lot of background information. And um, so uh, I brought this forward to our CCI Connecting Com Communities Initiative um, meeting, which um, has representatives from essentially all of the boards and committees in the town. And we had, a, I think, a very fruitful discussion there with um, part of the uh, conclusion being that uh, many members of the planning board have in fact been either appointed or are on other boards um, and committees. And so uh, twofold, one, to make sure that we're on the appropriate committees. And secondly, 
uh, when we have in our section of our agenda that we're having committee reports that we actually um, speak uh, in as much detail as needed, both at the respective committees as well as the committee to um, apprise the planning board of what's going on with some of these other activities and other boards. And um, what came about in that last CCI meeting, in fact, was that uh, the library now has a building committee and that it would certainly make sense for there to be a planning board representative on the um, library building committee. Mm -hmm. So um, I spoke some with um, Blah, 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 blah. Oh, Candace. Yes, Jim Candace. Um, he did mention at the last uh, library building committee meeting this week, there was some discussion about this, but um, there was really no resolution. He was under the uh, assumption or the impression that um, several leaders on the building committee would take the issue to the select board under the assumption that the select board is the body that makes uh, appointments to something such as the building committee, not the planning board that would make appointments. And I have to thank and acknowledge Denise, who is involved in a lot of um, of the town campus discussions right now, who has volunteered to be the um, potential planning board, potential planning board uh, representative. So I think the next thing might be um, it, it seems that the um, uh, there's, a, there's a question again as to whether or not the building committee uh, leaders would be coming to the select board, maybe even this Wednesday, um, to discuss this or request an appointment. And so maybe for the planning board to uh, send a respectful request letter to the select board, or somebody needs to make sure that it's happening. I'm not certain that it's happening. I don't think it's really necessary necessary to do that, considering that the select board is on CCI, and I think we did discuss that. And there is, I'm happy to do that because I am very involved in all the buildings in town. And I mean, unless someone wants to fight me for it, <laughs> I'm happy to do it. So, yeah, and I'll attend. I'll probably attend the select board meeting anyway on Wednesday. You know, maybe via Zoom. So I'll mention that, but. I, I think it's a really good idea to have multiple people on the board because considering that it is for the town, it's, you know, it's the library is part of the town. It's not. You know, right. So. It's just making sure that it comes up on the agenda for the select board on right. Wednesday. That would be the reason for uh, sending a letter. Well, I think, huh? the, I think the agenda is already out for the select board. I didn't see whether it's, it's on that. It's not. Well, that could be under, under you know, unanticipated. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Right. So yeah. you'll, Take it under your wing to I will. request. Yes, I will. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, <clears throat> some letters. Certain yes. Question. Would it be possible to ask a general question? Um, we use. There's well, it's. <laughs> um, we often do have public comments at the end, but thank you for returning. So, if you have a question. Sure, go for it. No, no, no. No. It, no would you like to? Yes. Oh, there oh, she's, she's beckoning. The it is the one questions <laughs> pertaining to what? <laughs> no. You can ask questions. We were in general with our public comments, we do have our requests that you certainly state your name, address, uh, try to limit your comments to two minutes and um, I'm sorry. Procedural questions. Yeah. Oh, procedural questions. Could you come up to the microphone? <laughs> um, and it may be, in fact, if they are procedural questions, that um, it may be something we 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 may we need to get back to you on. And in general, that's right. often what we will do is they're pretty general. Okay. Um, and there's one specific question on this project. What's a letter of Paul O'Brien? Directly into Paul O'Brien. Can you hear me? Can you pull the microphone, speak directly into it? Because it's really Thank difficult you. for Paul O'Brien, 7A. Identify Lock. yourself in your address. She said 7A, Gray Lock Lane. 
Okay. Once a letter of completion of the site plan permit and the stormwater permit is issued, is the applicant, are applicants responsible for recording at the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds and in the Sugarloaf case, would they record the letter of completion for the condominiums or your letter of compliance? Would they also record the peer review letter from Sarah Cummings, the as-builts, and the futures lots? Uh, I think that to, ask, to give a more definitive answer to this and any other questions you have, we will probably need to really check the, okay. <laughs> the protocol and the bylaws. And, and Denise, okay. Mm -hmm. And under the stormwater regulations for the town of Deerfield, it, it says that um, if as-built drawings are required, they have to be recorded at the registry. And I'm wondering if the 10, 28, 22 final plan has been recorded. Do okay. you do you know that? Okay. No, but we will answer all of these questions. Uh, you know, what would be very helpful is if you just send the questions, send them in writing. Oh, you don't. Okay. No, because you know we we could, first of all, it's not a public hearing, so we're you know it's really not an exchange. You you ask yeah. the questions, we give you answers because some of them we don't have the, the answers to. Yeah. So I think it would be extremely helpful if you could just write down all your questions okay. and send I can them, leave this with you. Send them to the um. I can leave this with you tonight. Mm -hmm. Did the planning board receive, and this is the last one that pertains specifically to this, and did the planning board receive this, the signed professional verification that the stormwater management system had been flushed of siltation and the concrete debris? I, I think a lot of these will be answered because there was a letter, Mr. Mr. St. Peter had asked many different questions mm -hmm. and uh -huh. Mr. Whiteman answered all of those questions and has also has proof to, to to show that he has answered all his questions. So that will be up. I was looking, I was unable to make the last meeting. And what I did was I went through the tape and it right. said that he was supposed to get some verification or something. Okay. okay. All of that will be posted on our website. And I'm just not sure. I'll have to ask Amy when she'll post that because when we get things in, we post everything on the website. Yeah, I didn't see it. I don't think it's up there no, yet. No, that isn't up there and, and nothing beyond... 1028 was up there. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. And it, it would be helpful if you could send, you know, send those questions in if if they're not answered. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll take them. Thank you. Oh, oh, you got them. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Did you have her name? Okay, then moving forward with our uh, seven more minutes of our agenda before our public hearings. Um, <clears throat> uh, a number of different boards and committees are sending requests to our state representatives, Senator, um, to uh, request that uh, remote participation in meetings can continue. Um, a draft of a letter from the Senate. The planning board was sent out to all of you, and then since then, I've sort of re revised the draft, uh, bringing forward two points. One being that, of course, COVID is still around. It uh, still is a public health problem, and we really feel that it's in the public health interest to continue with remote participation. Um, the other piece that I wanted to bring forward is that uh, sort of an unintended consequence of remote meetings is just significantly greater public participation. I mean, look at all the people on Zoom right now um, that uh, may or may not have been participating at all if they couldn't come to Zoom. And um, it certainly seems, uh, as I've talked with a number of people in many committees, that you know, not only would we like to have this open meeting law. Um, uh, provision extended, but actually um, codified and made possible on an ongoing basis. So that's the letter that um, I'm asking the board. If there's anything else we should include, or if that sounds good, we'll send it off. 
Um, Andrea? I I'm su would suggest that they are looked at carefully because the letter, there's some right. confusion yeah. about the right. yeah, right. Right. salutation. So. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Anna, oh, I was just I was just going to make one other comment. I think what's really nice is certainly when we have our CCI meetings, there you know could be 15 people on, and I find it's difficult sometimes just sitting and looking down and for people to be recognized. So it's sort of nice when you have a Zoom meeting when you have that many people, unless we can change the configuration here, which is difficult just because of what we have to work with. Also acoustics. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Kathy, did you have a suggestion? I, I wouldn't want to just mention COVID either because people who might be disabled will not be able to come for a variety of reasons or they have small children at home. So there's lots of other reasons besides COVID. So COVID did us a favor in one aspect here. Right. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, I'll, I'll oh, just read about expanding the. Yes, trans I would also say that. Yes, Rachel. Public access. To, <clears throat> we're not here on public access TV, mm -hmm. so we did have a lot of people who watched public access, and this is now really taking the place of public access TV, mm -hmm. which is different than being participatory, but it does give uh, citizens an opportunity to listen in and, um, if not participate, certainly listen. That's to right. what the issues are. So I, I, I suspect that that's uh, kind of a swap out too, given the way uh, media is at this point is people don't even necessarily have cable TV anymore. But they still have their computers. Right, right. <laughs> right but All you right. can watch it actually. I mean, well, that was the thing well, before. So. And, and plenty of people. So the planning board is supportive of us sending these to yes. Governor Healy and everyone else we can. <laughs> Okay, yes, thank you. I don't think we need to vote on that. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Do we have any committee reports? Oh, yes. Andrea leaves an open space in the creation. Yes, the open space committee members, uh, the majority of us, have been attending a webinar offered by Mass Trails. <laughs> um, which uh, talks about open space plans and then a variety of things. So it's a um, four-week series each Thursday at noon, and uh, we are learning interesting, important things through it. So we are all attending that. So say it again. So it's Mass Trails, Trails Webinar. Oh, Webinar. Okay, and you'll let us know if there's anything in particular that might pertain to our planning board issue. We will. Thank you. Now, uh, any other um, committee or board updates or webinars or education? Ms. I have a few. I think we've got two minutes, so I'll be really fast. Okay. I went with the select board to the Mass Municipal Association uh, meetings uh, conference in Boston, and actually, actually, it was it was it was really interesting. There were twelve hundred people, so I didn't really meet too many of them. But but what was great is that we did have an opportunity. We heard, heard more Healy speak. We also heard Kim Driscoll, and they both stated that they're not going to forget Western Mass. So both both uh, Carol and Ness and I had an opportunity. Carolyn gave uh, Kim Driscoll, who's a lieutenant governor, gave her the card and talked about coming out to Deerfield. I also handed her one of our postcards from Connecting Community Initiative, talking about the campus and everything that we're trying to achieve downtown and invited her as well. So I think Mr. Hilchey from <laughs> the select board will be writing letters to invite them out, but they're supposed to be visiting every one of the, how many towns do we have? 341, so, something like that. So that, that, was really, that was really interesting. One other thing, um, actually two other things. We also had um, representatives from, oh boy, from Mass Development come out to talk about um, funding we're putting, putting, asking for some funding for some of the buildings. So they've been very responsive and has, they've come out personally to do site visits. And then also um, there's another one, um, complete, oh, I'm sorry, complete neighborhoods, complete neighborhoods. 
So we are getting some we are getting some funding to have some public public meetings to talk about what's happening in the center of town. So that'll be coming up. So just stay tuned to that. But there's a lot going on. Okay, two minutes, seven o'clock. Uh, any other committee or or webinar reports? <clears throat> no. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> good, good things. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, I will open the public hearing for our accessory apartment bylaws since we already got got started on that a little bit. Um, uh, can I sure. Um, public notice. Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing pursuant to General Law Chapter 40A, Section 5 on Monday, February 6, 2023 at 7 p.m. for a proposed amendment to Deerfield Zoning Bylaws Chapter 179, replacing Section 2244 in its entirety with a new section, 3900 accessory apartments, including 3910 purpose, 3920 definitions, 3930 accessory apartment standards, 3940 application procedure, 3950 transfer of ownership of a dwelling with an accessory apartment, 3960 termination of accessory apartment use 2230 use regulation. Full text of proposed articles is available for review in the foyer of the municipal offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, and online at www.deerfieldma.us in the calendar event. Thank you. Um, our process for public hearing for this, as well as the, uh, the next one on sunny days, is that um, the uh, there will be a, a, an explanation about the issue at hand. Um, the board may then ask some questions of the person who is presenting the, um, the overview. Um, then there is an opportunity for public comment. Again, as we've mentioned before, um, trying to uh, have the comments be respectful, obviously one at a time. Uh, two to three minutes each, and uh, please identify your name and uh, street address. Um, and then there would be closing statements by the applicant, um, and the planning board then could come to agreement as to whether or not to close the public hearing. Um, uh, I, a um, sort of a highlight also of mentioning that during the public comment period, as we were mentioning earlier, um, it's not a time for back and forth between the planning board and the public. It's an opportunity for the public to present their questions and concerns. And then during planning board discussion, we will um, address some of the, the questions or concerns that um, were brought forward. Um, the public hearing then can either be closed or continued. Um, and, uh, and then we'll kind of take it from, from there in terms of what's happening next. So um, and for the uh, accessory apartments, uh, Kathy Sylvester has been doing really a yeoman's job with um, working for many months on this. So I'm going to turn this over to Kathy to uh, introduce and monitor. Thank you, Annalee. Um, so this bylaw has been in process for a couple of years, Rachel, or more. I'm not sure. I came in a year ago on this project. And sometime last spring, we formed a subcommittee, which consisted of members of the Finance Committee, uh, the ZBA Select Board, uh, Bob Walden, the Building Inspector, Chris Curtis as our consultant, a resident, and a uh, two planning board members, Rachel Blaine and myself. So we also consulted with the DPW regarding the sewer in town and how that would be affected. Uh, Police Chief Pachorek about parking issues, Peggy Sloan from FERCOG, other towns and their process and experience uh, with ADUs as well as um, our town council. So major points is we're trying to provide homeowners means of obtaining additional income companionship, 
services, enabling them to stay more comfortably in their home or neighborhoods, trying to increase housing inventory, protect property values and residential character of existing neighborhoods, legalize conversions in compliance with building codes. Um, we have discussed the size of ADUs and came up with the size of 900 square feet or less. Um, so that kind of is the overview of some of the work that brought us to this point. I think we have a pretty good final draft and so we're welcoming um, your comments this time. Thank you. Rachel? I just add that we also made a quick stop at the assessors, um, met with them and right. talked to them about um, how the addition of an ADU would in fact um, improve their home and therefore probably in increase their assessment potentially or not. Um, they were very open to that as as it, if you make an improvement to a home. But anyway, th that was another stop that we made just to uh, that there's no particular, the value of your home is not increased by the amount of money that you can make from it. So that was a very important principle that we did discover there. And um, that might be something people would like to hear about going forward. That's good. Uh, let's see, um, we have one member of the public still here in attendance and then quite a few people on line. So maybe we'll start with, um, and our, our if, gentlemen, if you have a comment, and then we'll sort of figure out with um, uh, Kathy, maybe you can be the one to just uh, call people as you see them sure. lining up. I mean, you're uh, Denise is our timekeeper. <laughs> so I'll be brief, I promise. <laughs> um, I thank you all. Um, my name is Matt Morovic. I live at 23 Juniper Drive with my wife and our young son. He'll be two in about a month. Um, I came to the meeting just to speak out in support of this proposal. Um, we love our house. Uh, we love where we live. We have a, a lovely plot of land, but a very small house. Um, my mother is a social worker who retired about two years ago uh, and is in her early 70s. Uh, she loves spending time with our son. We love having her for daycare. There's very little daycare available out there in the world. I don't know if anyone has been shopping for daycare lately. It is impossible. Uh, very good. So uh, yes, you, you probably have about a one, one year more wait if you got on the list, if you have a three-year-old now. Uh, You'll, you'll get your kid into daycare just before preschool starts. So um, we've been very lucky to have support from uh, our son's grandmother, my mom, um, coming up and down, but we just don't have the room to house her. And so the ability to build a small structure on our property, we have plenty of space for it on the land, but no place to put it on our existing house. Um, so this would be a tremendous help for for my family and I. Um, you know, we've we've explored some of the options for, you know, how we would do it and, you know, doing it the right way. We're not interested in it from a revenue generating standpoint, just from uh, uh, being able to uh, both support my mom as she ages and have her support my son and get the family closer together. Um, so I just want to speak in support of it. Uh, thank you all for, for all you're doing on it. I, I really hope it moves forward. Well, thanks. Mm -hmm. Anybody online that has a question? Is this Mr. Cunningham? want to unmute? Uh, I have comments. I don't know if that's what you're asking about questions. Comments are uh, invited. Yes. Oh, thank you. It's John Cunningham. My current address is 45 Oakwood Circle in Amherst, but I'm the owner of Parcel B of 94 Sugarloaf Street, which is a building lot. And I hope to build an accessory apartment with my primary dwelling. I have two comments. My first pertains to the definition of an ADU or accessory apartment in 3920, and specifically lowercase i, lowercase i, two, I guess it is, versus the standards you have in item six and seven of 3934. I'm, I'm trying to add additional flexibility here to people making accessory apartments in that there's a difference between increasing, limiting it to 900 square feet versus increasing the area of the build by 900 square feet. Because you could, you could add 900 square feet, but allocate 1,200 square feet to the accessory apartment by using some of the existing primary dwelling and rededicating it. So my suggestion is that that little double I uh, read more like uh, six and seven saying that 
It has no more than two bedrooms and does not increase the floor area or volume of the original building by more than 900 square feet. In other words, the building area can get bigger by 900 square feet, but perhaps the accessory apartment can be 1100 or 1200 or something. It's still be limited to two bedrooms, which will functionally keep it in check. My second comment has to do with um, standard five in 3934, where you have the separate entrance shall be located on the side or the rear of the building or et cetera, et cetera. I'm not sure why you would eliminate a tasteful entrance on the front of a building for an accessory apartment. And I wish you would consider just saying it should have a separate entrance or if it's a common entrance, it would have this hallway business. It's nice to have it on the side, it's nice to have it in the rear, but if it's tastefully done, it's nice to also be able to put it in the front. And those conclude my comments and I really appreciate you folks going ahead with this. I hope it has a positive outcome, self-interest. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I don't see any more. Um, so we've had two uh, interesting suggestions, which, uh, excuse me, sorry, um, in general, as you saw earlier in the meeting, um, since this is a town bylaw proposal, um, we've had our town council review uh, any changes that we might have. So I think potentially um, maybe if there's no other comments right now we could um close the public hearing it, it, it's except we haven't talked to the attorney about right these changes right but then what we could would i believe what the process would be we'd close the public hearing we'd have some discussion we may not have any changes if we do have potential oh mm -hmm. Can we not have so, a, can we not have a conversation sure. without having closed? Yes, we can. Sure. sure. And then and then we still would have a continuation of the public hearing. Town council looks at whatever decisions we make, and then uh, we would uh, have more discussion next meeting. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. We could do that. <clears throat> so um I am going to confess I don't really understand the first comment about the 1,100 square feet versus 900 in the ADU. So maybe someone here can help. <laughs> I think that the recommendation was rather than just saying it can't be more an addition of 900, say that you can't increase the floor plan of your existing dwelling by more than 900 square feet. Uh -huh. Because if someone added a 900 square foot, they could potentially then allocate more than 900 square feet to the ABU, I think is the clarification oh, okay. for looking for that, of the existing. He's shaking building. his head yes. So that sounds, that looks like we got it. Um, Kathy, um, you want to tell us the history or the reason why 900 square feet has been indicated? Sure. So uh, there, there was a lot of discussion about size and uh, according to, and if I can find the paper, um, the state, if you want to pass this by simple majority, um, you can say, um, let me find the wording here. Hmm. That basically it would, I don't think this is it here. So may, may I, this is Andrea, may I, may I clarify? The, these bylaws would need to be presented at annual town meeting. That's right. But And so we are trying to um, clarify and codify what the state has told us we could do. Maybe not the state has told us, but the state um, regulations precedent have have indicated. 
Well, we've kind of gone a little astray from that because the state oh. says you can get a simple majority vote if you vote that the ADU would be no more than half the size of the principal uh, dwelling or 900 square feet, whichever is less. We opted to say just 900 square feet because some of the homes in the community and the central district are 1,200 square feet. So a 600 square foot ADU is just a little on the small side. So we went with 900 and we're gonna hope for a two thirds majority vote. Um, there was a lot of discussion. Should we go to 1200? Um, it just seemed that we're trying to have a start here. We may end up changing it in two or three years, but we need to get somewhere where the town as a whole can support this. And I think we're trying to make it um, something that people would support. And so when you go into larger square footage, you're going to get more pushback. I think there's gonna be more problems with that. I understand what Mr. Cunningham's saying though. It, we're, you're just saying if you're enlarging the footprint, um, it could be no more than 900 square feet, but there is nothing in the bylaw that says you can't use part of the original building as uh, part of the ADU, as far as I can, as far as I read it. I, I don't see that. Well, can we let him say sure, something? Sure. Yeah, go up right ahead. <laughs> I would agree if it weren't for the definition, little i, little i, which says is not larger in floor area than 900 square feet. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I get it. it does. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's just, it's very, it's very, I mean, and we did try to make it simple. That was part We're of that. We're trying to make it trying simple. To make it simple. Um, and not tie people's hands, but. Also not change the character, this is Rachel. So in, in doing uh, something fairly straightforward and simple, like it's not larger than 900 square feet. That was that seemed uh, better than the various um, formulas. They're and, adding caveats and it gets confusing, yeah. yeah. Um, excluding unfinished attic and basement. So, I mean, that was a little, that's a little bit more, but I think we just felt like there was a straightforward nature to this. Um, but, and, uh, Mr. Cunningham did present this. So we were, we did have this in mind and his, his proposal is very reasonable. So that's, um, that, that is, it's in conflict with what we're thinking about, but honestly, we also don't want to open something up that we don't understand what will happen if we change the nature of certain neighborhoods. Right. So, um, you're adding more than nine, 900 square feet. We just don't know how people are going to, to take this and run with it. And this was a very modest proposal for the beginning of it. And I think that's what Kathy's pointing to, that it seemed like mm, a good start. Um, is 1,200 a better size? Is 1,200 a really large size to add onto a really small part, you know, house that isn't, that's barely 1,200 square feet itself already? Um, so we were, we were concerned that we didn't wanna make so many uh, multiple uh, categories that it would just be onerous uh, for people to use. Um, perhaps we, you know, we could look at a special permitting. Yeah. That's another possibility for a larger, for, for change, but that there would be no increase other than the 900 just to start because that's feels like it's a very reasonable amount of space. Well, and I think we're also just trying to increase housing inventory, help people stay in their homes. We can come up with a lot of different caveats for individual situations, but then the bylaw would get very onerous. I think we need to make, keep it simple um, and and to write it for, to the intent of the bylaw, right. which needs to stay. And not to create it um, to family dwellings. That, that's a very different thing. Right. Um, Beast and the way our regulations are now, there are only the you know, multiple family dwellings are fairly regulated in our town. It's hard to do, and we might look at that again too. Um, but that's that's a whole treading into a whole another pond, which then brings up the 
uh, the entrance and what makes it uh, two family different than a single family with an ADU. One of those things was the entrance because you want it to look like a single family home in keeping with the neighborhood. Um, and that was part of the reason for that. So you can always, if you're building fresh, brand new, as Mr. Cunningham is doing, you may have a single entrance that leads to two different, you know, uh, dwellings, but there's only one entrance at the front of the building. And that's pretty standard in uh, all the towns that we surveyed. Well, and also that it's always occupied by the homeowner, right? Yes. Only one unit can be rented. Right. Yeah, you need to use the mic you, though. But in that home, sorry, it's Kathy Wichova. But in that home, you're you're one of the areas that's being occupied is the owner of the property. One area has yeah. to be the owner, okay. and yeah, that's right. To avoid that two family, <clears throat> kind right? Of yeah, because it's not two separate families. It's always going to be owned by the. It's always going to be occupied by the homeowner. One one section, yeah. yes, Correct. right. Anybody else have any comments? The first comment. No, I guess that was no. Just was support. that was just in support. So I, I go for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't have a standalone, mm. so that is a difference. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and that that's another that's a next level, right? We're not California yet. It's what do you mean standalone? Special permit. The special permit. Yeah. So does it sound as if we're not inclined to make any changes? I'm not inclined to make any changes because I think you get into a bag of worms with all these. Yeah, I mean, I think we are meeting the intent of the bylaw the way it's written. Um, if you want to build a two-family, that's another issue. Yeah, I mean. I think, as you said before, someone said before, you know, this, we, we do a bylaw and then you test it. I mean, we're trying to do the bylaw as uh, to be as perfect as possible, but nothing, nothing is ever perfect. So something may come up two, you know, two years from now, three years from now, we take it back and revise the bylaw. But I mean, you know, there has to be a start. So I think as Kathy said, we can keep talking about this for, you know, however many more years, but, you know, we, we have a housing, we've got a housing problem, we've got a child care problem, we're an aging community, and people are having a real difficult time staying in their homes, and, and even more difficult time trying to then buy back into the into Deerfield, because you can't find anything that's livable for less than $300,000. And a lot of people just can't afford that. So, you know, it's another good reason for accessory dwellings. You know, keep our families together. So. I comment. Thank you, Denise. I I'm good with. The so way it then, is. would that be um, a motion to close public so hearing? Can I make a motion to close, or does it have to be somebody? We're not making any changes. Right. So, can I make that motion to close public comment, or does it have to be somebody else? I move to close public comment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have a second. Second, Andrew. Thank you. <clears throat> we have a vote. Rachel? So we're um, closing public public hearing. Comment. Just a comment. Mm -hmm. for, for this meeting. Okay. We're not closing public hearing. I think it's well, It's a public hearing that we're closing, actually. Yeah, right. that's what I think. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's not comment. We're closing the public hearing. Yes. And... At, at which point then we would be potentially moving this on to be placed on the warrant. Yeah. So or don't that? we first have to vote to right um, to right. vote to close public hearing, Rachel? Yeah, I mean <laughs> we haven't had a lot of public. Mm -hmm. No, we haven't. Sure. And my problem with that, I agree. I, I mean, I feel like it's great to move it move it along, but I think all the questions that we came up, you know, that we were addressing. Are going to come up in the town meeting now maybe that's fine maybe that's but it would be nice to have those questions come up 
before town meeting so that there were I know yeah. anyway sure I did advertise on yes public on social media that's on that week it was posted over to the next meeting right so may I may I ask I, I want like to ask a question please this is Andrea right now we would we are talking about changing the wording of the bylaw draft under 3920 to say the building providing the principal residential use for the lot as it is uh it, on which it is located and that is the that's those are the only that's the only change we are proposing at this point right yeah so Rachel, are you suggesting we hold this over? I'm just saying if we hold it for one more public one more hearing, meeting. we, we um, continue it until our March meeting, then it, there's no skin off anybody's nose, I think. Um, then we close it there and we, we decide. And that way people can mull it over a little bit more. I don't know. It just feels very precipitous to do that. <laughs> I'm so conservative. I just... <laughs> well, we have the space to do it. You know, like we yeah, have... that's fine. Yeah, you you also have a lot more experience. Well, <laughs> so I, I, I'm just like moving along. It's just so like a 20 minute public hearing. I'll tell you right, much. exactly. Go ahead. Yeah. I have a suggestion. Hey, Mr. Larrabee, maybe you would include that in your article in the paper in large font, please. Public come to the public hearing, the continuation for next month. Most people read the recorder. If not, tell your neighbors. Tell them to come to our hearing. If they have these Please. Concerns, concerns about. Yeah. So could I? Well, okay, so we can vote so, to continue the public so hearing. So I move that we continue the public hearing until our March 8th meeting. Sixth. Sixth. All oh, right. It's one of those funny months. March 6th meeting, um, at which point we can pick this up again. And we have a second. Uh, Andrea, second. Okay, those in favor, Rachel? <laughs> Look at her. Uh, yes. <laughs> Kathy? <laughs> Kathy Wachrobe, yes. Andrea? Andrea Leibson, yes. Mm -hmm. Emily Gaylord, yes. Emily Wolfgold, yes. Denise Mason, yes. Kathy Sylvester, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to be continued. Um, and now we have our, mm -hmm. oh, goodness, continuation of our... Um, um, best veterinary uh, parking lot and CT scan for cats uh, building. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, um, so uh, uh, the continuation as uh, a reminder that we did have the um, <clears throat> determine uh, that we wanted to have Berkshire Designs or it was determined that Berkshire Designs would be the peer reviewer. Uh, since then, Besh did make uh, an adjustment to their site plan review um, proposal that was included and sent off to uh, Berkshire Design. And um, so tonight, uh, Berkshire Design is speaking to the peer review um and uh the the uh formal letter of the uh peer review draft at this point um was just dis distributed today so um and i understand from the um applicant that in fact there's uh some outstanding issues so in fact we may be having a continuation with that as well but um mr Furman, if you'd like to um move forward and then um, I'm not sure who's here from Berkshire Design. Ms. Uh, Ms. I'm here, Lucy Conley. Thank you. Well, uh, good evening, everybody. I'm John Furman. I'm the office manager for VHB in Springfield. And uh, that was a, a great summary of uh, where we've been uh, on this project. Uh, we had received some preliminary comments from, uh, from Lucy. Uh, we uh, addressed them and uh, sent her in uh, Berkshire Design some updated plans. And with that, they were able to finalize their review, which uh, is uh, the formal review that was sent to Amy, I uh, believe, on Thursday. Uh, from there, we uh, worked, we updated the plans, we addressed uh, all the comments we could. And then Friday night, 
at like 7.30. Uh, we sent out three emails to Berkshire Design and to Amy with the site plans, uh, updated stormwater management report, a response to comments and a traffic. So Friday at 7.30, I'm sure all of you are hanging around waiting to see that come in and review it. Um, so uh, we ex fully expect that we're, we're, we will be continued. Um, as uh, the chair had uh, alluded to, there are items that we have uh, not addressed at this point, uh, only because uh, we, we just didn't have time. Um, and there are items on the, uh, the, the second review form that uh, uh, Lucy has issued that are basically just for consideration of the board. So uh, for the item that hasn't been updated, uh, it's the lighting plan. Uh, and that started off with, uh, we had a lighting plan which we submitted, which the board has seen. And uh, we were having difficulty getting the lighting designer to update that to the current layout. That lighting plan actually had the building addition on it. And the building addition had bollard lights in front. It was kind of skewing the layout. So uh, we submitted it just so we could get the application complete, uh, fully thinking that by the time we had uh, peer review comments, we'd have an updated lighting plan, but that didn't materialize. So um, uh, we that that is the one outstanding item that we have. Uh, we've uh, sent that and the uh, current bylaw for lighting design to uh, the uh, site electrician who is in, in charge of getting that lighting plan up to date. So. Uh, we expect that it'll take them a week or so to get that up to date. And as soon as we get that, we will forward that to um, uh, to Berkshire Design and to Amy and just to kind of keep the file going. Uh, I believe the the uh, rest of the comments that were on uh, Lucy's uh, 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 review that came out today were basically for consideration for the board and, and to get direction. Uh, one of them is landscaping. And when we met on site, uh, that was one of the questions for landscaping and uh, if we were going to do anything. Uh, we, we've elected not to do any landscaping on the site. And for anyone that's been to that site during operating hours, you, you will know that the landscaping means absolutely nothing to the people that go there. Uh, the parking lot is so small. Uh, they'll park on bushes, they'll park on the lawn, they'll park everywhere. Um, the parking expansion is designed so that as uh, you get to the edge of the curb line, uh, the parking area basically drops right off. It, it's built on an embankment. We filled that whole area. So uh, we, we don't have any landscaping in that area uh, and there is no ability for it to park, uh, uh, no ability for people to park there. The um, uh, uh, landscaping, if we were going to install something on there would be on the slope and it would be below the level of the parking lot. So it's from, from a, uh, a shielding point of view, it offers nothing. And that parking lot is set back about 200 feet from uh, five and 10. So it really won't be visible. Um, if you look at the current layout that we have now, uh, there is area to the north. And I, I think I'd mentioned um, previously, and I, certainly to Lucy is that, uh, Vesh is looking to uh, for another project in the very near future, which might include a, a new building uh, in that area. So we we don't want to plant any landscaping at the edge of that parking lot to use it as a a buffer to start stop people from parking in the field um, and then have to dig it up uh, later. And so what we would suggest is that if the board would allow the project to go forward uh, without any landscaping for this parking lot area. When that building comes in, we will have a for formal landscaping plan around the building, around the, uh, any additional parking that we're gonna put in that area, uh, and we'll, we'll take care of it at, at that point. I'm, I'm currently um, going and doing concept plans for VESH to see what size building and, and how that layout will work. So that will be coming very soon. Um, the other areas on there, I don't know if uh, uh, I, I have the the uh, uh, the uh, second review memo. I can I can call it up and we can go through it. Um, the uh, but before we do that, I just want to give a, a just a, a brief overview of some of the changes that happened on the on the site plan. Um, we had designed the 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 basin with uh, two to one uh, slopes. Uh, because uh, we were trying to keep it contained and not have it spread out because of the environmental areas around us. Uh, and the DEP requires three to one. We knew um, uh, three to one was a requirement. 
Um, and then we also looked at uh, going forward uh, in expanding and maybe using that basin uh, for the future development. So we expanded the basin and we changed the slopes to three to one. And we've been fine tuning the, uh, uh, the, the parameters of the basin, the water quality, the, uh, the total suspended solids removal, the riprap, uh, correcting some details. So in general, most of the plan content that uh, uh, Berkshire Design has reviewed has been corrected or modified to address their uh, comments, both from the aspect of the bylaw and from uh, you know just standard engineering and what it would prefer to see. And I'll let Lucy either confirm or deny that right now. <laughs> That, that's correct. Uh, all of our technical comments ha have been addressed. And so it, it is uh, what I sent out a letter this afternoon that, that eliminated all of those because your Friday submission, you had addressed everything. Yes. All right. So if I can, if, if the board would like to, I can uh, call up Lucy's uh, uh, review that she put up today and we can talk about some of the items that would just be uh, some input. Um, certainly, would Ms. Connolly, would you be the one who would address those, or would it be Mr. Furman or together? Sure. Um, uh, you, I can bring it up, or John, you can bring it up. The letter. Um, why, why don't you go ahead, Lucy? And I'll, okay. I'm trying to find the our response letter that addressed some of those that you responded right. to, and I'll have okay. that. Um, so let's see. I will share. So um, this uh, we issued a letter on um, Friday with uh, quite a few technical comments. But this morning I went through the plans that came in on Friday and the stormwater report, and uh, it addressed all of those technical comments. So I rewrote this letter to uh, just include quite a few comments that that we would that we where we are suggesting the board. Um, they want to to um, to have a, to to comment on um, this first comment um, is is uh, is actually uh, just procedural. It was just uh, wanting to um, document that um, that the parking lot expansion uh, met was under the maximum lot coverage, which which it is. Uh, so I will I will move on from that one. The second one is on parking lot design, um, and our comment was that the board may want to require a landscaping plan for the expanded parking lot, uh, which is what John was just talking about. Um, and under the same category uh, with the lighting, uh, because. Uh, there, there was limited detail on on the lighting plan in what we reviewed. Is that um, what Mr. Furman is, has sent to us this afternoon? Is that what you were saying? That you're sending us an updated lighting plan? Goes to Amy. That's correct. Okay, thank you. So, uh, if I could interrupt, so the landscaping plan would be the first item that we would be looking for uh, some input from the board on and whether you would require one or not or allow us to delay that for the future projects. Would you prefer that we go through all the comments now and then discuss them later? Um, I, well, we, we've not had an opportunity to really look at this. I think it, <clears throat> excuse me, may make more sense for the board to um, have an opportunity for our individual uh, study. And then next at the continuation, if we have additional questions, uh, we would bring them forward then. Sure. Um, because understanding such as with the lighting plan or um, discussing about the wetlands or whatnot, you may be doing some additional work between now and then, correct? <laughs> uh, we're, we're pretty much done. Uh, for any revisions, there, we're really what's remaining here is whatever the board would like us to address. Well, although you still 
are needing a continuation, certainly for the lighting plan. Absolutely. And um, right. So, I mean, if I'm seeing a lot of nods with the board that we like to look at those individually. From my point of view, the lighting plan is best addressed right alongside the parking lot plan. I understand your logic for the landscaping and from my, you know, from my perspective, that does there th that does make some sense to wait. Um, I see that um, to the next phase, but I think the lighting, I don't see the real logic and waiting um, for the next phase. I think it's best to start. No, I, I wasn't asking for the lighting to wait for the next phase. I'm just waiting for the lighting designer to create the plan. Gotcha. You'll have that within a week or so. So I could so. Imagine even like in 5481 with our green development standards uh, that you could yeah. ad address that more specifically than what has been addressed so far. Uh, we actually uh, further down the letter, uh, we have or further up the letter, we actually have uh, responded to all of those. All more reason we should. Uh, I could bring up the letter where John addressed those. Would that would that make more sense? Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand you. So, so John uh, also issued a letter where he responded to um, to these comments um, that I made. Um, I, I think this is it, Lucy. Yes, and so this is. I'm. I brought that up now. Um, this is also the letter where he responded to many technical comments, which are now uh, uh, all set. But um, but here is, for example, his response to the um, green green development standards. So I think if yes. all of the comments, it appears that if for certain they could be consolidated into one final peer review letter that then we can um, examine yes. with proper yes. time prior to our next yes. meeting. That would be very helpful. helpful. Sure. If if that helps the board, what I can do is I can take uh, Lucy's. Uh, uh, review letter she uh, issued today and cut and paste our responses into that letter and reissue it back. That would be very helpful. Thank you very much. Yep. So um, I believe then our next um, statement would be uh, whether or not the applicant agrees to a continuation to our um, March 6th meeting. Well, we, we do. Um, Amy had sent me uh, two continuations. I neglected to send you a continuation form for the last meeting. So I sent that tonight. That's waiting in her inbox. Uh, however, Amy, I sent you, if she's on the, the line, I sent uh, an email to her. For whatever reason, uh, the form for continuing uh, tonight's meeting to the 6th, I couldn't edit it. I couldn't do anything to it. I couldn't print it. I couldn't do anything with it. So I just emailed it back to her and said, can you kind of reset this and send it back and I'll get it to her tomorrow. Okay, and then we'll sign. Yeah. So I, think yep. yeah, I, I can do that. With that, thank you very much, Amy. And Mr. Furman and Ms. Conley, thank you very much also. So we will see you March 6th, hopefully a slightly warmer evening. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is hopeful. <laughs> last last That's Monday snowy. night. <laughs> okay. Um, and then um, our... Uh, I don't believe we have to vote. No, nope, we just we need just a signature. Have the signature. Okay, good. Thank you. Good. So the um, now we will open another public hearing um, on our sunny days uh, establishment um, uh, 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 applications, and um, the Andrea is reading the public hearing notice. Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Monday, February 6th, 2023, 7 p.m. on applications filed by Sunny Days, Inc. for site plan review, special permit, and stormwater management review for property located at Greenfield Road, map 159, lot 14, to construct three new cannabis-related buildings, including a 5,000-square-foot test laboratory, 26,705 square foot indoor cultivation facility, 3,539 square foot dispensary, associated parking for each building, ancillary landscape improvements, lighting, 
stormwater management, and utility improvements pursuant to zoning bylaws, uh, chapter 179 and chapter 155. Application documents available for review in foyer of municipal offices or online at www.deerfieldma.us in the calendar event. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Um, so uh, similar to what we've done before, I'll have Mr. Berman give a, um, a, a, a narrative overview of this project. Um, and then uh, most likely because it is, uh, well, not most likely because it is quite a detailed project. I am anticipating we will be having um, peer review and a continuation also, but um, Mr. Furman. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Uh, again, uh, I'm John Furman. I am the uh, office manager for VHB in Springfield. And with me tonight, uh, you should see, uh, uh, let's see, where is he? You know, my screen is in the uh, upper right, upper right corner. Ken Boquillen, who is the uh, one of the principals for for Sunny Days. So what we thought we'd do tonight is I'd give a brief presentation of kind of the technical piece and the site layout. I understand the board would like us to keep it brief. Um, so, but I think Ken would like to kind of give an overview uh, of uh, the organization and uh, the project itself and and kind of like what he's about. So I'd like to turn it over to Ken for a minute. Thanks, John. So the proposal tonight is for this cannabis campus, we call it. Um, there's multiple buildings um, relating to cannabis in a single site. Um, we're, we're setting it up sort of like a campus. So there's roads throughout some wooded property. Um, and you know we have a pretty large piece, 28 acres. We'll only be using about five acres of that. Um, so this, you know, John Furman will, you know, be presenting the civil drawing that we've worked on. Um, we've completed all our construction drawings for this process. Um, and we're, we're looking forward to, you know, getting the, getting the review done and, and get in front of the planning board and discussing any questions that you might have about the property. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Um, if it's possible to share my screen, I'd like to just blast up the site plans for a moment and, and run through them uh, quickly. All right, so uh, let me close this. Hopefully you're seeing our site plan set. And uh, this is, is generally uh, the, the cover sheet. I'll just blast through this, our general notes. This is the plan that I think will actually provide the best overview uh, of the site. And I'll just start with the layout for, uh, for those that uh, may not know where we are, the property just to the south of us uh, is adjacent to Route 116, and that's kind of a small little greenhouse, greenhouse farm stand uh, property. And we are the, the two parcels next to it. Um, this parcel here is the main parcel that we were, are planning to do most of our work on. And you'll see the property line here for the second parcel, which we are, are not touching. Um, the site access location is dictated for us by MassDOT. Uh, this is a, a limited access highway and this uh, break in access, which you can kind of see these two lines, um, is already permitted by MassDOT. So our driveway needs to uh, fall uh, within there. Um, when you look at the site at kind of a close up like this, there are a number of wetland features that we have to work around. So uh, you can see there's a perennial stream Kind of running, um, I believe, in a in a westerly direction, comes through this culvert, and that has a 200 foot buffer zone associated with it. There's a wetland feature here. Then there's another one, kind of connects to this, and then there's another one that connects to that, coming from the north, all flowing south, into a large uh, this large stream, and then it heads underneath Route uh, 116. Um, when we had a, a previous meeting uh, on this site, uh, one of the abutters from the from the south had commented regarding the water that this property uh, already experiences and was concerned what this would do. Uh, so uh, Berkshire Design will will review all of the the stormwater management pieces, but we have eight detention basins: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we have eight because we have shallow groundwater here. 
And uh, what we need to do is uh, maintain distance between that groundwater um, and uh, the bottom of these basins by uh, DEP requirement. So uh, our, we, uh, briefly, we set a design point at the end of our property here where this perennial stream leaves and starts to go under uh, 116. And we modeled it under existing conditions, and then we modeled it under proposed conditions. And what we are proposing is less flow at that point than currently exists. So, um, you know, we're, we are confident we're going to have some fine tuning of the system to do, uh, and we'll work that out with Berkshire Design as we uh, we go forward. Uh, the buildings that uh, Ken had mentioned, uh, the one most south is the third party testing. The one in the middle here is the dispensary building. And the one in the back here is the cultivation building. Potentially, there may be a third phase um, or a second phase, rather, uh, in the back here where we have upland area, and that would include another wetland crossing. We are not considering that uh, at this time. Uh, the application includes all of the information that the bylaw requires for the special permit from the marijuana perspective. It has all the, the certified statements, uh, copies of licenses if they're available, uh, operating plans, odor plans, uh, waste plan, everything is included in there. So there's a lot of reading that the board will do um, to get themselves up to speed. From a parking perspective, we have uh, parking basically isolated into three parking uh, spaces. What is not shown on here, which the next time we do an update, we will add, are some electric uh, uh, vehicle charging stations. Uh, we had the site walk for VESH uh, after we were uh, uh, after we had submitted this plan, and we understood how important it was for the the board to have electrical charging stations. So I believe we have two for the testing, uh, one for the testing lab, and two for the um, uh, the cultivation building back here. And, and we'll we'll show those on on the next update. From a, a sewer perspective, uh, let's just back up a bit. From a utility perspective. There are basically no utilities in this area of Deerfield. Um, the water line is about a thousand feet south at 116. So we have an application with MassDOT to extend the water line. Uh, we're gonna we plan to directionally drill it under uh, Route 5 and 10 at the fire station, connect it and run it in the shoulder uh, back to the, the driveway and then into the site. There is a sewer line here. Uh, in order to connect to that, we'll have two pump stations, one of them in the back, which will pump to uh, a station in front. These two buildings will gravity flow to that, and then this pump station will lift all the sewage into the, um, into the, the station. Uh, there's no electricity here. So uh, we've met with Eversource, and we walked the site. They'll be extending poles uh, along uh, 5 and 10. It'll cross somewhere in this area, but again, we're starting actually further past the fire station, running them on this side, crossing over, and then bringing them overhead into the site. So uh, that is generally a uh, uh, an overview of, of the project. Uh, we have the notice of intent uh, underway, so we'll be filing with the Conservation Commission um, in, a, in a short bit. One of the items that I learned today, which will result in a uh, update to the plans, is that uh, this um, detention basin here uh, meets the area requirement uh, for development in the riparian zone of the of the that perennial stream, but because it's over 5,000 square feet, would require an extensive wildlife study. Uh, and given this time of year, uh, we really isn't the time to do one. So we're looking at a concept right now where this basin goes away. We regrade this slightly. And then we put that basin over here. So it'll be a compensating change. The area of here will be the area here. And uh, we'll have that done and updated by the time uh, the peer reviewer uh, starts this. Um, uh, and in general, from a, a traffic perspective, perspective uh, this is the traffic study that, that we submitted. Um, uh, it's a full traffic study. Uh, I usually go down to this table here, which is table two. Uh, and this is basically uh, uh, the information taken from the Institute of Transportation Engineers for uh, marijuana. They, uh, the 11th edition has, uh, the 10th edition started and the 11th edition, uh, edition has refined the information available for marijuana. So these are uh, uh, our projected uh, peak 
hour uh, increases. So on the weekday morning, um, the peak hour is expected to generate 33 new trips entering the site and 22 exiting. The weekday evening is expected to generate 66 uh, trips entering and 80 exiting. These are peak hours, just wanna remind you. And on the weekday, I'm sorry, on the Saturday midday, uh, 62 entering and 63 uh, exiting. So this site is not a heavy uh, traffic generator and given the, um, the capacity of route five and 10, we are not anticipating any uh, issues at all. Um, I'm sure the board has heard uh, in the past how uh, dispensaries and retail, uh, when they've opened up, uh, the opening day has been a nightmare. There's been traffic jams and um, uh, issues uh, for communities. Um, that was prevalent in Northampton when uh, INSA first opened up and um, they uh, it was the first one in the state and their people from other states were coming. Uh, we've been involved in marijuana projects uh, across many communities in Massachusetts. And what we are seeing is that those opening days influx of heavy traffic don't exist anymore because there's so many marijuana retail facilities uh, existing right now. They, there's just so many to choose from the like package stores. We're just not getting that influx. There will be a minor increase over these numbers, but it's nothing compared to what the, the, the first days of the, uh, the, the uh, first ones in the state were. Uh, so in general, that's, that is um, uh, our presentation. I, I, I can stop sharing and answer any questions that the board may have. Mm -hmm. Is it? <clears throat> Hi, this is Kathy Wichova. I do have a question. Sure. So you have your study location map. It shows the site mm -hmm. 91, five and 10, VESH up to the north. Do you have an indication on there where the DOT has determined the driveway in to your? The, yeah, so it, it's not in the study, but if you look at the site plans and you go to the survey, survey starts right here. Okay. You go, go to the, um, I guess this would be the third page of the survey. And you'll see access allowed state highway layout number 7080. And that's exactly where our driveway is. So, so can you just generally speaking, show the sort of Google Earth site and give a estimate of where that is in location to say the fire department, treehouse, VESH, um, and that intersection of 116 and 5 and 10 in the fire sure. department? I'm trying to just get a sense of where it is off of five and ten. Yep, it's it's uh, without even going to Google Earth, I can tell you it's generally about a thousand feet because that's as long as the water main is. But let me go to uh, Google Earth. Yeah, it's it's eleven hundred feet from the corner of uh, one sixteen and the five ten. Okay, let me get you a good view here. Yeah. So this is this is the fire station. This is 116, and there's that farm stand. Yep. So uh, let me see if I can move this. It's just south of the opening of the trees in the treehouse brewery. So it's right about there. Okay. okay. It's a little bit farther, John. It's a little bit farther? It's just a little bit farther, yeah. It's right around there where you had that cursor. Oh, right about here. Yeah, it's right around there, yep. Okay. It's just south of the, the field opening there um, in front of uh, Treehouse Brewery. If, if you were going to go to the site and wanted to see that, the best, uh, the best gauge of it is this culvert. Okay. You can see this culvert from the roadway, and that's at station 51, and the driveway is at 55, so it's about 400 feet past driveway. That'll get you to the edge of it. So the, the other good landmark, too, um, if, if you're driving by anyone on the board and just trying to figure it out, so um, right there to the right of the driveway, um, there's an old trestle crossing. Um, 
in the train tracks because there's the old trolley tracks right there. Mm -hmm. um, that trestle crossing is big granite stones and you can see that pretty easy. And we're just about 50 to 75 feet south of there. I have another question too, if you don't mind. <laughs> so um, you stated that it's 28 acres and you're using about five of them. So what will happen with the rest, the 23? We'll be leaving the rest of the property um, as is treed. Good. We won't be disturbing any of it. Yeah. We pre we'll be preserve preserving the property, the rest of it. All right. I have a question, Emily Gaylord. Um, can you just clarify, you said because of the time of year, there couldn't be a comprehensive wildlife study. Can you just elaborate on that a little bit and, and what that means? Sure. Uh, I mean, most uh, animals that you would look at in a wildlife study are hibernating right now. And the wild, purpose of the wildlife study is to determine wildlife, its habitat, and uh, 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 seeing what impact this project may have uh, on that. Um, if we did a wildlife study now in this time of year, the DEP would not accept it because everything's frozen, everything's hibernating. Our wildlife study would just say that there, there's there's no wildlife because there's none visible this time of year. So are you just going to be doing the wildlife study at a later date? Is that the plan? No, we're not going to be doing a wildlife study. So there's triggers uh, that, what, that require the wildlife study. And one of that trigger is development in the riverfront area uh, that exceeds 5,000 square feet. Uh, the riverfront area and the purpose of that is to protect this river, this perennial stream. So by moving this basin out of the, uh, the riverfront area, the trigger for requiring that study goes away. Okay, thank you. That was, that was the piece that I needed. And okay. then I have one more question, if that's okay. Um, you mentioned Eversource is going to need to bring poles in. Do you know how many and at what frequency there's going to be new poles? I think uh, it's about 175 feet in between the poles on the 510. And, and, and then there'll be less of a distance as they come onto our property. Do you know exactly how many, John? I don't. Uh, I never got a concept from them. But, you know, if, we, if we're 1,200 feet and let's just round it out to, uh, you know, every 200 feet, that's uh, that's six poles. Okay. Um, We're generally in that area. The town has certainly been working with Eversource or trying to ask Eversource for buried buried lines, if possible. So if that is something that you could respectfully acquire of them, that would be very appreciated. Mm -hmm. So, so in this situation, I worked extensively with Eversource. Um, we walked this property over and over again. We looked from the north. We looked from the south. Um, we had multiple meetings out there with Eversource, um, trying to get uh, power lines underground in this area is much more of a disturbance than it would be to just put the poles in. Um, we, we would have to, you know, go along the edge of the road where there where there's wetlands. We'd have to be disturbing wetlands um, with the poles much easier. They can just put a few poles across and they won't even interfere with the wetlands. They can stay away from them. Um, we would actually cross the 510 at a diagonal. Um, so it would span the wetlands and not get anywhere near it. Um, so I think, I think what we're doing, we, we've looked, we wanted to go underground, um, but truthfully, this is a much more sensible and realistic way to get power in there without disturbing the land. The poles would be on which side of the street? The side that the driveway so, is on or the opposite? So they would go up up to from the firehouse up to about where he is right there. And then they would cut across diagonally to get away from all that wetlands and crossing. They would span it and stay away from it. Then there would be like one or two more poles up to the driveway. And then we would go into our property. So Eversource says that it has to have 15 feet of clearance of trees on both sides of a pole. Does that mean all those beautiful trees that are on five and 10 are gonna come down? No, so actually if you drive up there and take a look, the trees are already cut down on the, uh, that would be the east side of five by the firehouse going all the way up to where we are. And that's why we picked it because those trees are cleaned out. Um, mm -hmm. And then as you cut across diagonally onto uh, right there, that's all just open space right there. There's 
I don't know, 30 something feet from the road. That's all clear. Just grass. Yeah. yeah. And Ken is, Ken is, is correct. When we met with Eversource, we looked at the clearing as well. And this was the, the route that made the most sense from the wetlands uh, disturbance and, and the clearing. There was, I think, one or two trees right as soon as you got past the wood line uh, of the fire station. But uh, there's there was trimming, but for the most part, this was wide open enough that we didn't need to do anything. Will we be able to have a site visit? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we've had we've had many, so we'll, we're more we're more than happy to walk with you out there. We 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 will caution you that there is no great access into the site now. This plan looks awesome that it has a nice paved road. But you've got to have your billy goat shoes on to get in there. Uh, you got to go down a slope, back up over the trestle, through a wetlands. And then once you get into here, it gets fairly flat, but you do have wetland crossing. So it's not an easy walk. <laughs> I actually have one more question. We will um, schedule that. Amy can work with us on scheduling that. Hi, this is Kathy Wachov. I just have another question. So there's a water plan and a waste plan. Is there an exhaust plan too with the cultivation and that sort of particulate dust? So I can help you with that. So right now we're building, I have another company. We build large scale facilities for cannabis um, manufacturers across the country. Right now we're building four places in, uh, for clients in Massachusetts. Um, I picked this property for a certain reason. Um, one of them is we have a highway on both sides. We have 91 to the west. We have the 510 to the right. And we're surrounded by wetlands. Um, we have, you know, a farm stand through wetlands to the south. And then through a bunch of property, wooded trees, we have vesh to the north. So as far as uh, exhaust goes, these facilities are extremely high tech. Uh, they're extremely energy efficient. We build the most energy efficient facilities in the industry right now. Um, there will, all the, all the air is treated before it leaves the building. Um, so you won't be smelling any, you know, any smell outside the building. Although the rule says that you can't smell it anywhere is on the boundary line. Um, we are far from the boundary line in all directions. Um, so, so we, not only will we have, you know, a very good air purification system in our cultivation building, which, you know, consists of hydroxyl machines, I'm not sure if you know what they are, but they encapsulate it um, and, and, and get rid of the smell before it gets, you know, purged outside. Um, and then, of course, we're, we're with well within the laws of keeping smell away from our boundary lines. So the, so the mediation is the location, the farmlands, the high tech energy efficient air. It's it's treated. I don't I don't know what the definition of treated is, but um, that sort of loose particulate does not make its way out of the building? It's treated? Yeah, yeah, it's all filtered with carbon filters. So okay. nothing leaves the building. No okay. smell, no particulates. Okay, good. May, may I ask, do you have a facility in Massachusetts that already exists that would be comparable that we could look at? We have one. I don't know if the client's gonna let you look at it. We're building a 20, uh, almost a 50,000 square foot facility in Amesbury right now. Um, for CNA stores, they're a veteran owned company um, and we're building a few other ones. So yes, we do have facilities in Massachusetts right now. Um, a number of us went to Treehouse's other, another facility to take a look to see what they were doing. So this might be useful to us. Hmm. We, can, we, can, we can discuss it with the owner. I can't guarantee he'll let you in. Um, these people are pretty tight with their technology. Um, for what we're doing, but I'll ask for sure. Thank you. I just have one more curiosity question. You said you're building it to be high tech and energy efficient. Are you pursuing any high performance building standards? Oh, we're way beyond the building performance standards. Well, um, I mean, are you going to be pursuing a certification? Like no, a lead or something like that? No, we're not going, we're not going to have a lead certification, but, um, there is a thing called the cannabis power score um, that's run by the state in, in Massachusetts, the CCC. Um, they come in, they determine how much energy you're using, how much water you're using, um, how efficient you are, and then you, they give you a power score. Um, we are fully shooting to top that list um, of the most efficient facility 
in Massachusetts. Thank you. We, 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 could, we could get into some technology. Um, we do things that no one else does. Um, we recapture all the waste heat. If, if you know about electrical components, doesn't matter whether it's your refrigerator, your stove, anything, it's, it's, it's only just so efficient. They're all less than 50% efficient. So 50% of your energy is just getting burned. Um, we capture all that waste heat and that waste energy, and we reuse it in our building. Um, highly efficient, um, you know, much, much more efficient than anything else you're seeing out there on the market. We're a hydronic system, so we push, you know, we push water instead of hot air, so it's much, you know, much uh, more efficient. Thank you. Other, other questions? We certainly, I, so I, I have another question. Um, the O'Reilly, Talbot, and, and Okun um, reports talks about concerns about compaction of soil and the structure of the soil and whether it can support hmm. the weight of buildings and floors, et cetera. Are you concerned about that? No, we've already done all our tests. We've done all our geo tests. I mean, we've been working on this project and been held up by the town for two years. Um, we started almost two years ago doing our geo testing, which means we went in there, we drilled it. Um, I was there with them. Um, we drilled all the sites and, and the, the, this property will easily hold the weight of these buildings. They're not very heavy. It's not uh, extreme industrial, like maybe Yankee Candle or somebody with these giant machines in there. Um, so yeah, this we're very confident that this is uh, from the tests that we got that this property is fine. And uh, just as a, as a follow up to that, so the purpose of doing the the geotechnical report is to actually get their opinion on on the soils. So uh, the geotechnical engineer has two uh, tasks on a geotechnical report. First is doing the borings and telling us what's wrong. And then uh, the latter part of the report gives recommendations for building and how to address what they feel is wrong. So if you look later in that report, it gives us the recommendations for foundation designs so that the building will be able to uh, withstand uh, and not have uh, differential settlement or any other issues. So uh, they talk about the about fill and how much, they don't say how much fill, they say that you will need fill. Do you anticipate needing a lot of fill for this, for these buildings? Uh, I can, I can answer that. So the reason that they put that statement in there is because they don't have a site plan yet when they when they do that. So uh, uh, similar to what we did at, at VESH, I'll, I'll give you uh, some examples here. So this is the, actually, I think I have to go to uh, the grading plan here. Yeah, so let me, uh, so go to the grading plan here. So uh, uh, find a elevation uh, with a, so this is elevation 206 right here. And if you follow that through the site, the proposed elevation here is 207. So there will be a foot of fill in that area. This is also 206, and this building is set at 208. So there's two feet here. Um, this elevation here is, it doesn't have one on it. I can find another one, maybe I'll go over to here. It's between one and two feet of yeah. fill. So, under so the this elevation back here where the cultivation building is, is 208. Let me just go to the next sheet. All right, there it is 208, and the finished floor is 210. So in general, we're about a foot to two foot of fill across any area that we're developing. Other questions at this point? I mean, I think we will be requesting um, peer review for the stormwater and site plan review special permit. Um, so that will certainly give us more opportunity to enjoy your answers. All right, well then um, I think um, I know that the town staff, Amy in particular, has been good with uh, trying to secure uh, peer review uh, applicants, and I understand that 
the applicant that we've received is someone that you are um, supportive of? Yeah, uh, you know, we were we were encouraging Berkshire Design to to submit on this as well. As you can see, the 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 relationship between uh, Berkshire and VHB was pretty good on VESH. We worked things out in advance, so I'd like to continue that through this project. We're working with them quite a bit on a number of our projects. Sure. Um, so um, then we would be, I believe they sh they have said that they should be able to have their peer review report in time for our March 6th meeting, if that's acceptable for you for a continuation date. It is. Okay, good. And Ken is nodding as well, so. Excellent, so we'll have all <laughs> signatures on that. Yeah. And, um, we will be then continuing this public hearing to March 3rd, March 6th, March, March 6th. 6th. Excellent. Very good. Thank you very much. This was um, just a good level of detail and overview for us today. So I really appreciate that. Just a second, one more question from Denise. Annalie, do we want to set up a time for a site, a site review? I think the I think site visit, Amy, maybe can send okay. out a doodle. Okay, that sounds good. And we can. That's great. Well, if uh, is the board uh, interested in actually going into the site a little bit with our uh, frog boots, as you said, what I what I will try to do is uh, we have this technology where uh, you know the map program on your phone. Yeah. Uh, we can superimpose the proposed development on that map program. So as you walk through the site, you're the blue dot, and then you can get approximately where the buildings are. I'll try and get that set up for that meeting so we can have that technology when we walk out there. So you won't just be kind of walking in the woods and kind of guessing where things are. All right, well, Amy can check with you to begin with as to when you might be available, and then she'll check with us. Very good. That'll be good. All right. And when is the Conservation Commission um, discussion? Uh, we haven't filed it yet. We're we're still working on the notice of intent. Uh, their their next meeting uh, that we can actually attend is March 16th, I believe. Uh, we're we're too late to uh, submit for the February meeting, so we will be submitting somewhere around March 1st, and that'll get us on that uh, March 16th agenda, I believe it is. Thank you. Any other questions? Or... All right. Yeah, Okay, well, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. All right. Pleasure seeing you all tonight. Stay yeah. warm. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Good night. All right. Uh, um, back on our agenda, coming and going. And lots of Do we have any um, people attending who want, want to make any kind of comment? Oh, well, um, certainly. Thank you. Andrea is wondering if there's any comments from the public who are uh attending otherwise i mean i think next week we'll absolutely or next meeting will be a yeah. good opportunity for that no okay thank you Andrea. all right um other business not reasonably anticipated ms mason brought forward a question for discussion with the planning board I yeah oh, okay. uh, we've been meeting oh. this We've been meeting at seven o'clock. I know we changed the meeting time tonight at 6.30 because our that's when our attorney was available, but I'm questioning the rest of the planning board. I think we can make the decision as to what time we start meeting. So I'm proposing to start earlier and I just wanted to hear what others have to say. When do you eat dinner? I agree. <laughs> I mean, earlier works for me. It's, mm. it's, it's once a month. Yeah. We meet once a month. I think we can have a snack before the meeting or eat afterwards. If one doesn't have I mean, a period, I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I just have to. Sh I do work till six thirty, so mm -hmm. and I'm sure mm -hmm. Catherine has those moments too. So, but I, I, I don't work on Mondays uh, anymore. <laughs> well, that's in my future. <laughs> I'm over here, but it's it's fine. I can organize around it, but it is. Yeah. I can do either. Well, is that different than the two of us? Um, I can make it work. 
I was a little delayed this evening because of a level 10 meltdown <laughs> from a toddler who didn't want me to leave. Yeah. Uh, but I can I can make it work for planning for Deerfield. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> How about Patre? <laughs> well, my cats didn't want me to leave either, but that, they know, dealt with it. So take a cat tantrum <laughs> over what uh what I endured on my way here. Okay, <laughs> so, so so do we hear a proposal at what time? Is six? Do we want to start at six thirty? Oh, six sooner than six thirty. Six thirty. Give that but a shot. Still, we're, we're still looking at. Yeah. I mean, six is work. If, I, if I'm not, if I'm six is fine too. If, if I'm gonna get out of it, I gotta get out of all of it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like mm -hmm. right at that point. Right. Same, right? Yeah. <laughs> so if we want to start at six, I'm not. I'm not averse. I just have to organize my. I mean, the meetings are typically two hours long, so we would be finishing at eight o'clock. It's eight twenty now. Thirty. Like starting at six. It, is, it depends. I mean, I mean, most of the most of them are just two hours. It turns out I can't. I, I am not going to be able to be yeah, here the next right. week. Right. So you're right at all. Yeah. At no, all, I'm right. flying. I'm flying at that exactly there. that time. Uh, how about I propose we we do this for a few months? If it if it's an undue hardship on anyone, sure. we can revisit it at six thirty. Yeah, and but we have to make sure that we talk to Amy and that when we have public hearings, so we post you, so we don't mm -hmm. yeah. Um, okay, that's good. Uh, good. And as Andrea just mentioned, she's not going to be able to come to our next meeting. So a reminder to the planning board that um, in terms of our public hearings, uh, we do have a state requirement uh, that we must all attend all of the public hearing meetings. Otherwise, we can't vote except for we can sign a statement that we have reviewed the, mm -hmm. the, the tape tape of the meeting and that we are fully informed so um that holds for any it's you pretty know, easy you can just watch it on youtube oh yeah right yeah sure. how quickly there after the meeting is it is it posted to youtube Usually the next day evening at the most two days later okay. but yeah yeah, yeah uh, chris chris posts them the next day they, they are up very quickly yep okay <laughs> All right. Um, do we need a to no. Okay, we'll be brief. Mm -hmm. uh, um, do we have any other public comments? Uh, and we did reports already. Uh, Amy, did we? Did you hear back from our our large scale solar folks about their annual reports to us? Uh, so the one on Set Right Road, it, it was a bit of a, um, d some detective work to find out, you know, who's operating it now and find the right person, which I eventually did. Um, I contacted her last week um, and she was completely unaware that they need to do this. Uh, sh I sent her a sample report from the other uh, facility, which she had asked for. Um, and I, I think they may, I asked her to write a letter to us if they thought they needed more time. Um, where, but, where are they out of? Who, who has that? Who has control? Of that? Um, so that one is uh, Next Amp owns that. Is it in Virginia? Is that, or are they sold it out? Oh, I don't know exactly where they're based out of, um, but so they they are aware. The other one I have contacted many times. They are fully aware um, that the due date is February fifteenth. So, uh, oh, thank you. And how about Amber uh, Gardens? I'm sorry, Amber Gardens. Their monthly report. I have not. I have not heard from them. Uh, I can contact them and ask them to send us the report that they're supposed to send us. Right. They were the ones who volunteered that they would send us a monthly report. So if yeah. uh, if you need anything more strongly worded, it is rather disturbing that you have to uh, try to do this. This should not be your responsibility. It should be theirs. Okay. So yep. thank you. Okay. I will take care of that. And you will hope they take care of it for you. Thank you. Sure. Uh, um, so our next meeting, as we've been saying off and on online, 
is um, March 6th. Um, there has been some uh, discussion I've been hearing from select board um, that annual town meeting may be delayed a little bit beyond the usual, I don't know, April or whatever. May 1st. Right. So hold your breath on that one. Mm -hmm. And um, otherwise, could I entertain a motion to adjourn? Five I minutes? move that we adjourn. I second. Mm -hmm. I heard that you guys just stayed forever and ever last meeting. I wasn't here. How did you adjourn? No, I didn't. We How didn't did that happen? Him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you must have been so sad. Yeah. What we say? All right. Bye. 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 Yes. Right. Thank you, Amy. Thank you too, David.